Hi, I'm Tyler Fulce. I'm a nuclear engineer with a little over 10 years of experience in the commercial nuclear power industry, from engineering to operations to emergency response. I don't claim to know everything there is to know nuclear, but I can certainly share some knowledge. Today we're going to look at a video by Minute Earth called Why It's Impossible to Win a Nuclear War. Let's check it out. Nuclear war would be catastrophic, but maybe not just for the reasons you think. Hi, I'm Cameron, and this is Minute Earth. Yes, it's true that immediately following the detonation of a nuclear weapon, everything and everyone inside the blast zone is incinerated. And yes, over the following days, weeks, and years, radiation poisoning causes death and debilitating disease in those just a little... That looks like a good ground zero map they're showing. Let's see, the fireball looks like shot uh, from the uh, actual center. Looks like likely fatal burns, some deaths from the thermal pulse in addition to the shock waves that you would get from the actual explosion. And of course they're going with grain to depict radiation. <laughs> but this far it looks pretty good. A little farther afield. But that's just the first domino of devastation. Radioactive fallout, refugees, looting, and large-scale damage to infrastructure will all be bad. But the smoke is what has the farthest reaching and deadliest effects. Probably getting into a nuclear winter. Lots of smoke goes into the atmosphere at one time. It absorbs sunlight, which means it can affect the climate. After Mount Pinatubo erupted in 1991, the resulting ash cloud temporarily dropped global temperatures by an average of a degree Celsius. Smoke from mega wildfires can have similar local effects. But the smoke from a burning city is even more of a problem, though, as cities with all of their buildings, plastics, asphalt, etc., as all of this stuff burns, it creates smoke with tons of free-floating groups of carbon atoms known as black carbon, which is the spec- that's a good point that I actually haven't heard of, but it makes sense. All the uh, material that you'd get from the infrastructure would cause even more emissions than, say, forest fires or volcanic activity that I mentioned earlier. ...sauce of our nuclear doom. These dark particles soak up sunlight and warm the surrounding air, making it buoyant and lofting the smoke into the stratosphere. Smoke from wildfires and volcanoes can also make it high in the air, but these sources don't produce as much black carbon. As a result, their lighter colored smoke doesn't absorb as much sunlight, and therefore won't float very long. But smoke made mostly of black carbon can stay aloft for as long as a decade, riding air currents and cooling the planet by absorbing the sun's rays in the upper atmosphere so that they, and their heat, never make it to the surface below. Scientists have recently calculated that just 15 nuclear bombs could create as much as 5 million tons. 15, okay, they're assuming um, 100 kilotons apiece. Yeah, that's, uh, so to get a sense of scale, um, 15, 20 kilotons were the weapons that were used on um, Hiroshima and Nagasaki during World War II. These are still relatively small weapons compared to what could be used. Um, the uh, Bravo 83 um, nuclear bomb could go up to 3 megatons or um, 3,000 kilotons by itself. Just keep that in mind. Black carbon. That's enough to cool the planet by an average of 2 degrees Celsius. But wait a minute, we have detonated more than 2,000 nuclear bombs. Why haven't we experienced this cooling already? Well, that's because the vast majority of nuclear detonations have happened either high in the atmosphere, in remote places, or deep underground. That's all in order to minimize the potential for damage, including the damage that would be caused by megatons of black carbon. They also wouldn't detonate them in cities to test them. <laughs> Two nuclear bombs have been used to their full and devastating potential, but somewhat frighteningly, those were small bombs compared to what we have now. Today, not only are nuclear weapons way bigger, we also have way more of them than we did then, albeit not nearly as much as existed.
developed during the Cold War. Still, a war between nuclear powerhouses could create as much as 150 million tons of black carbon, enough to drop global temperatures by an average of 16 degrees. For reference, during the most recent ice age, you know, when glaciers covered half the Earth, global temperatures were just 7 degrees colder than they are now. And if a nuclear-triggered mini-ice age were to occur, it would freeze food production in most of the world. Many of those who managed to survive the bombs and radiation and freezing conditions would suffer from inevitable global food shortages. As many as 5 billion people worldwide might starve in the first year. That's nearly two-thirds of the global population. And at northern latitudes, it gets even worse. Up to 99% of people there may starve to death. So a war that heats up to the point of going nuclear could leave everyone in the cold. This video was brought to you by the... That's interesting that they went that direction. Yeah, that would be the, um, the most devastating effect by, uh, by far. Um, note that this would be similar to an impact event such as a large asteroid is the real danger. Other um, very large um, volcanic eruptions could cause this sort of thing. Um, I didn't actually know that about the black carbon, the using um, destroyed cities creating all of that extra smoke that is more dense than, like, say, the detonating uh, nuclear weapons underwater, out in the desert, or airburst. Um, but those were some pretty good points um, about that. I don't, I don't know the math off the top of my head as far as how much more, uh, more severe it would be with city detonations. It would be interesting if cities were destroyed that way with conventional weapons, how much, basically how much of it is the fact that there were high yield nuclear weapons or how much is just from destroying cities because uh, nuclear war isn't the only way to get to this uh, frightening scenario of uh, nuclear winter um, there's also impact winter and uh, volcanic activities like you mentioned earlier in the video but that's a good point. It didn't bring into the uh, effect of the immediate effects of, um, say, the U.S. and Russia wiping each other out or a lot of those typical um, misconceptions about the, uh, the radiation being the worst part of the, uh, of the nuclear war. So I thought it was pretty good. If you like this video, please hit me a like down below and uh, go and hit the subscribe button if you want to see more videos like this. If you didn't like this video, um, please let me know down in the comments. I'm always looking to get better. Thank you very much for watching. I'll see you next time.